Greetings, I am Tom Merle. On this week's episode, we talk logistics make the difference. Check it out. Greetings, I am Tom Merle, and this is my year of grace. I know you could be anywhere, so the fact that you are here today sharing your greatest gifts, your time and energy means the world to me. I hope you know that in this very moment, you are appreciated, you are valued, and you are loved. As you can see, I am alone. <laughs> We have ourselves a special You and Me episode, which I'm always grateful when I have the time to do those. And so let us do what we like to do on our solo episodes, and that is we're going to begin with some intentional breathing. So wherever you're at, just go ahead and sit up straight, check on your posture. And on the count of three, we're going to breathe in. And as we do, what I'd like you to do is to think stretch, be, lift, whatever you're comfortable with, but up. And then as we breathe out, we will do so through our mouth and we will release any tension we're holding. So again, in through your nose and you lift up, out through your mouth and you release. Here we go. One, two, three, breathe in. And release. One more time, breathe in. And release. And we just want to set an intention of gratitude. Whatever is going on right now in this very moment, I want you to think of one gratitude that is so incorporated into your life that you don't even see it anymore because you almost take it for granted. My go-to gratitude in this moment is my ability to blink my eyes. I think of if I couldn't blink my eyes, life would be an uncomfortable game. (laughs) So I'm grateful I can blink my eyes. Maybe it's I'm grateful for access to clean drinking water or I'm grateful for the internet. (laughs) I want you to think of whatever that gratitude is. The count of three, we're going to breathe in. One, two, three, breathe in. And release. Today, we are going to talk about the sexy and exciting and woo topic of logistics. Now, before you say, forget this time, logistics, I'm out of here. I have found that from working with Tons of organizations, nonprofits, individuals from the books I've read, the people I've studied, all of the time that I put into becoming the best leader and business manager and coach that I can become, I have found logistics is the game changer. That if you can, in addition to, of course, being creative and the ability to communicate your ideas and all of those other things. Okay, we're going to say those are a given. What I have found that makes the difference between somebody's success and people's desire to work with them and the stress in their life is their ability to master logistics. What do I mean by logistics? I mean the preparation of the details, the organizing of events, those little things that oftentimes fall outside of our areas of imp- of passion. For the most part, logistics isn't necessarily somebody's area where they're like, you know what I love to do? Logistics. Usually it is something that we think, as soon as I have the money, I'm going to outsource these things to somebody else. Now, the thing about it is, no matter where you're at in your career, no matter how much wealth you acquire, logistics, details, the finer points, you're always going to have some aspect of them on your plate. And as you move up and you become the boss, you're going to want to have a firm grasp on how logistics can be managed so that you can train other people, you can keep an eye on them. 
And so what this episode is, is a, to be honest, I'm not going to give you a bunch of skills that you can use to manage your logistics because I have lots of courses that do that. There's a lot of episodes out already. In fact, in the show notes below, I will link to a time management system that I've created. It's a course. It takes 45 minutes to go through the whole thing. What we're going to share is I'm going to share with you five reasons why you need to make sure that logistics is something that you master if you're not taking them serious enough right now that you begin to and how this can apply to your life. You might have heard the phrase that they say logistics win wars. And I'm not just using this war analogy for the sake of it. It is because when you're moving that many people in a battle or you think of hundreds of people, thousands of people, whatever it is, what wins those situations is the people who can manage how people are being fed, the rotations of when people are going to be in play, when people are sleeping. And so that's why in war, oftentimes what people will try to do is to sabotage other people's logistics. Now, logistics are largely about preparation. So the other day I was getting ready to go out into the yonder world and usually I'm up uh, just before the sun comes up depending upon what time of year it is. Now what I make sure that I do every single day is, and if you're not already you should do this, this is a side note, is I wear sunscreen. So in the morning I'm usually putting on sunscreen before the sun has even come up. And so one morning I was doing that and thinking, what is the point of this? I'm going to go outside and wait for the bus or wait for my lift. And it's going to be completely dark. Why am I doing this? And the reason is because the sun will eventually rise. And this preparation that I'm doing now is going to become relevant at a future time. So a lot of times for logistics, whatever it is that we are preparing, we are going to be in the same boat as Tom putting on sunscreen while it's still in the dark. The practice that you're putting into your craft now, the planning ahead, the creating the calendar so that you know Hmm, when I think the next six months ahead, I know during this month, that month, and this week, I'm going to be super busy. So I need to make sure that I have already taken care of these tasks or prepared things ahead of time so when that really busy week comes, I am all set to focus on what's going to have my attention and these finer details, these logistics, that instead of them falling off my plate, instead of them going crazy, I'm going to plan ahead and have them done that that is something that you're going to need to do before the moment arrives. And so a lot of logistical planning or a lot of preparing in your life is going to need to be done on faith. And so am I saying that there's a spiritual aspect to logistics? I am, in fact, saying that. That when you divide your life into quadrants, you have your four quadrants will be, let's start with urgency. You'll have urgent and important and urgent and not important. Then the other two quadrants, of course, are not urgent, and you'll have not urgent, but important, not urgent, but also not important. A lot of us, for the most time, spend our focus in urgent and important. What this means is that because we have a lot on our plate, because of a lack of preparation, we are doing things that need to be done now because they are important and they need to happen right now. When we're only spending our time in that quadrant. That's the equivalent of I'm already outside on the beach. The sun is glaring on me. I've been sitting in it probably for a half hour because I've been doing things on my phone. Oh my God, I'm starting to get sunburned. Let me quick put on some sunscreen so I can try to negate the damage that I've already done. Whereas when I'm putting on sunscreen, when it's completely dark outside, that is a important but not urgent moment. And so when we get a focus on logistics, more and more of our time can be focused on that not urgent but important space. When you do that, that's where you're really able to give yourself the space to envision, to dream, to really take time to think about the intentions and the ways you can make something just a little bit more special. Whether this is planning somebody's birthday that you care about, whether this is something to do with work, whether it is your personal life, all of this stuff applies that when you can give yourself that space to plan ahead, it removes a lot of that stress, which means you can be thinking about this task from your higher self. And so that's why preparation is oftentimes going to be in that important but not urgent space, which is going to require that faith 
that maybe this isn't glaringly important now, but it's going to be. So think like me that although I'm putting on sunscreen when it's still dark outside, this is going to become relevant all too soon and I'm gonna be thankful that I took the time to do it ahead of time. On that note, one phrase that I want you to become mindful that you say, and I want you to cut the phrase out is, I will do it tomorrow. If you have a big goal or ambition, or especially if it's something that you are wanting to quit, a bad habit, or it's a habit that you want to start, rather than starting it tomorrow, I want you to do something today, a little bit towards it, so that you begin now. All too often I've seen people say, I'm gonna do this tomorrow, whether it's something they're gonna quit or not, or they wanna start, and when tomorrow comes, We are going to operate the next day with the same patterns, the same habits, and the same thought patterns that we have from the day before. And so if you haven't somehow interrupted that habit, if you haven't somehow implemented a new practice, then for the most part, we're going to go on autopilot and it's going to be business as usual. Let's say that you're reflecting upon how there's a lot of stress and anxiety in your life. And so you start to think, you know what I need to start doing? I need to start meditating five minutes a day. I need to take that time to do it. So you know what I'm gonna do? Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna build in five minutes to my morning. I'm gonna meditate right after I wake up, boom. Oftentimes what's gonna happen is we're gonna wake up and we're gonna realize, oh my gosh, I have the same amount of time that I always do. What was I thinking? I don't have time to meditate today. So I'm just going to do my day because you know what, if I meditate, it's just going to get me even more stressed because I'm going to be worried about not having enough time and oh my gosh, this is the anxiety. Uh, so you're going to probably say, you know what, I'll do it when I'm on, when it's the weekend. So when the weekend comes and you sleep in and you're like, you know what, I really, I'm going to reward myself with watching some TV. Really, I need the meditation during the week. So Monday morning, I'm going to meditate and this cycle continues instead of you create a goal, like let's say I'm going to meditate for five minutes. I want you to right then and there, figure out when today you're going to meditate. When I get home, before I go to bed, I want you to make sure that that day that you implement something teeny tiny where you start to live that value, you start to live that practice that you want to implement because you get a couple of benefits. One, we've already addressed this, that you get that pattern interruption and pattern integration into your life where you're starting to create that muscle memory of this new habit, this new goal that you want to begin or you want to release. And so you're doing it now, which gives you that instant gratification. If it's meditating, if you meditate for five minutes today rather than waiting for tomorrow, you get to experience the pleasure that comes with doing this new thing like meditation So that in that place of already instilling in your body that this is a benefit and already building in that muscle memory of creating this habit, when you wake up tomorrow, you'll be like, okay, I need to set my alarm 15 minutes early and you'll have that motivation to say it's worth it. Now, this is especially true if you're quitting something, if you're quitting smoking, if you're quitting drinking, if you're quitting eating this bag of chips, whatever it is, instead of saying, I'll do it tomorrow, I have found across the board that the people who are successful, instead of finishing that thing that they're gonna give up or having one last hurrah or one last binge or one last go around before they give it up, that once you make the decision that you give it up in that moment, you throw away that pack of cigarettes, you throw away that bag of chips, you stop saying the word, whatever it is that thing is that you can't say, I'll do it tomorrow, it has to be done today right now, in this very moment, whatever it is. If it's this huge goal that you have, you need to figure out what is one bite-sized thing I can do today. Because when we're talking about logistics, it's preparing now before it's coming, that it requires that faith, requires that practicing, that you can't say, I'm gonna start it tomorrow. You need to do it today. Now, I have found a great analogy and I'm okay with it if it potentially grosses you out because I know that you have been through this. Have you ever been in a situation where you do your business, and I'm talking about in the bathroom, you're all done, you're feeling good, it was a victory, and you look and there is no toilet paper. That is one of the worst situations to be in for any of us. 
you're sitting there literally shit out of luck. <laughs> that was hilarious. And there's no toilet paper. And what's crazy is how many times does that happen to you in your own house? Because you say to yourself, oh, you know what? Before I sit down to do my business, I'm going to replace the toilet paper roll then. And then you sit down, you do your thing. And when you needed it, of course, you didn't think before you sat down. Oh, wait, before I do this thing that I really need to do right now, let me prepare. Let me. <laughs> let me replace the toilet roll. Nope, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I'm laughing at my analogy. I'm wondering if this is landing or if people are like, this never happens, Tom. You were revealing a aspect of your world and this is going to haunt me for the rest of my career that I'm talking about the toilet paper roll. <laughs> but I'm going for it, okay? I'm sticking to this analogy because all that's to say, do not toilet paper roll yourself. Where if you say, you know what? I'm tired. I'm busy. It's not, you know, I'm... There's too much on my plate already. I will take care of this important thing, this seemingly small but very significant thing that might not be an emergency now, but if I really think about it, will be an emergency if it is not addressed at the moment I need it, that oftentimes these small things we put off. And we think for some reason that if we say to our brain, brain, remember this, that our brain will be able to remember this. So first of all, our brains cannot remember and draw up everything we need as much as we say. So if you're not already having a practice of writing down your to-do list, of writing things down, of creating systems to organize them, you need to start doing that. Like I said, down below is a course you can use to organize your to-dos and your logistics and all of that kind of things. But what I want you to remember is that thing that you're saying, you know what, this is okay to put off because it's not an emergency now. Oftentimes, those things come up in a oh shit moment of panic where it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't remember to do this thing before I arrived at this moment. I didn't prepare and now here it is and I am screwed. And I know that we all have some area of our life where it is those things. Or you've been in a meeting where they've all looked to you and said, so how is this thing coming? And you're like, uh, 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 uh. So I want you to think, of course it's going to happen on accident every now and again. But I want you to build up that inner power, that inner strength, that habit that when you hear your mind say, you know it's important, but you rationalize not doing it now because you say, I'm busy, I promise I will do this when it matters more. That you start to recognize when you're mentally moving your priority from saying, instead of doing it now when it's important but not urgent, I'm gonna wait to do it when it's urgent and important. That you are making a conscious decision that I am going to now practice a habit that I know creates stress, that I know creates panic, and that I know when I operate in this quadrant of urgent and important continually on a consistent basis that I underperform, that I don't do as good of a job as I could have done, and that especially when this is where I start to operate 60, 70, 80, 90% of my time, that that is what anxiety, that is what stress, and that is what creates burnout, and that it's not a good look. So start to catch yourself, like I said, I call it don't toilet paper roll yourself, where you say, eh, this is basically empty, but it's not all the way empty, I'll worry about this later, and then you come to that moment where you realize, oh my gosh, I should have prepared better. Start to recognize the area of your lives that it's happening, and pause and say, no, I am not going to move this from the important but not urgent category and deal with it when it is urgent and important instead i'm going to address this right now it's going to take me an extra five minutes but that five minutes of preparation is worth its weight of gold and i hope that within your mind you talk to yourself in these really cliche phrases and that's what your inner dialogue sounds like <laughs> next what i want to talk about is the starting line I have found that when there's a big project you're working on 
or a goal that you're striving towards or a vision that you have, whether it's a health and fitness goal, whether it's a relationship one, whether it's something with your family, something with your business, your, your, a place you're working for, that when we build up a lot of pressure around a starting line, that there becomes this heaviness in pursuing, in taking care of the logistics. So let's say that you're launching a new product. Or let's say you say that I want to have this health and fitness goal, or I want to start dating, whatever it is. Let's say it's these three examples. That that initial start, that first date, that first time that you work out, or that, that first time you launch that product and you tell the world, this is what I'm doing. That when we build up so much energy and so much Really, the the right word to use is caring around the result of that starting line that oftentimes it has us moving the starting line further and further into the future. I see it a lot, especially with product launches or business launches or people finally telling people, I have this business, this is what I'm doing. That because it takes so much energy, so much logistics to say go, that we really start to think, What if I do all of this work and I fail? What would that mean? Would that mean that I am a failure? Would it mean that all of this time and energy that I put in was a waste? Would it mean that all of the people who have told me that I'll never amount to nothing or who have doubted me or who have, I've seen it in their eyes like, oh, you're another one of the people who are creating this thing. A lot of that shame and guilt that we have around starting lines can prevent us from starting. And so we put off the logistics of making it happen because it can feel better to say, one day I will launch this and then I will get to feel success. And you can kind of sit in that, well, I would be successful, but I just haven't launched. So that's all it is. On the other hand, you launch and you fall on your face. And then it feels like, This is why I didn't do this, because I knew I would fail when I started. What am I getting at? I am getting at that I have found that life is a series of micro starting lines. That if you find yourself really creating a lot of mental space, a lot of pressure, a lot of energy around one starting line, that you chop that starting line down, from this one big one that has so much energy and pressure to saying my starting line is I do this one task. If I can do this one task, that is my starting and my finishing line is completing it. Because once you do get to this eventually big starting line, (laughs) it's really just the start. It's not a finish line. It's not a prove yourself line. You start and immediately once you complete that starting line, you have another micro starting line that you need to cross. And then after that one, there's another micro starting line. And life is really a series of decisions where you say, yes, I will start. Yes, I will get in the game. Because no matter how much success you achieve or how much failure comes your way, you're really in the next second facing another decision of will I continue? And really to me, continue is a start or stop game. Will I start? Will I, when this next decision comes across my mind, say yes? And so no, on both sides of the spectrum, let's say getting to the starting line isn't a big deal for you, but that continuing, that consistency, that is your challenge. To know that Everything is a starting line. It's a decision to keep going, and they are a series of small decisions. We do eventually, we get these big ones that we have to make, these huge crossroads in life where one decision we made is going to dramatically alter our destiny. But for the most part, life is made up of these micro decisions. And we either say yes and continue to become the person that we want to and know we are meant to be, Or just a little bit at a time, we start to eat away at our values. We start to eat away at our resolve. We say, I'm going to put this off and I'm going to put that off. And little by little, that logistical war 
you start to lose. And you're no longer operating at your higher self. And so, a reminder to continue to, in those little moments where no one is looking, show up as your highest self. And know that it's not a judgment, it's not a shame, it's not a value thing of who you are as a whole. It's a who you are in this second and your ability to make a different decision, your ability to turn things around completely, your ability to be exactly who you want to be happens a second later. So there is no wrong decision you can make that is a game ender because they're all micro decisions that you're going to make again and again and again because really your true self, who you actually are, only exists right now and now and now and now not 10 minutes ago when you started this well not 10 minutes not 10 minutes from now when you finish this you exist right here in this moment and so who do you want to be right now who do you want to be right now that is what you get to decide the last thing i want to talk about is that you have the ability to go further and farther then you are allowing yourself that you are believing right now. The power of an unresisted thought where you have a dream, you have a vision. Right now you're, you're thinking, yes, Tom, you've sold me on this. I want to become better at logistics. Allow that thought to travel its distance without you then saying, but I don't have enough time or I haven't been good at it before because in this moment is who you are. You may know this. One of my favorite things to do is spin class. Dun, 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 dun. I love going to spin class because it's this like really great mind body letting go and really getting in the moment and making sure that you're not psychologically holding yourself back and all of these things. So there's this one thing that a lot of spin teachers like to do that tricks me every time. So I'll see in my monitor that we have one song left. I'll know it. I'm keeping track because I'm running out of energy. So they'll say, this is your last song. I want you to give it everything you got. So you're giving it everything you got. And you're in those last 30 seconds and my legs feel like they're going to fall off. My heart feels like it's going to explode. I'm running out of breath. I want water. It's crazy. And they're like, keep going. Only 30 seconds left. So I give it every single thing I have. I put it all on the table and the the last note of that last song hits, and I am whew, spent. Oh, I'm ready to start relaxing. And then the teacher says, gotcha. One more song to go. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? I gave it every single thing I had. How can I go one more song? And they're like, I know you're thinking. I gave it all I had but I know you have more in you. And so somehow I find within me that extra energy and I go further than I ever thought was possible. That even after I have gone as far as I felt and I put everything on the table, that there is even more left to give. And so I know in your life, whatever you are going through right now, if you feel, that, Tom, I've put it all on the table. Tom, I've, I've gone as far as, I've gone further than I ever thought I could go. Why are you always pushing me to go further? That I know that even in those moments where you are completely spent, you feel like you've given every idea you have, you've tried everything, you've networked with everybody, you've done it all, you're just burnt out, you're sick of hearing people say the positive thing, stop it, Tom, I'm turning you off, that I know you have another song in you. You have another mile to go, that you have so much energy left to spend. You have so much more creativity that you can share with the world. And so wherever you're at, know that you got even more to give. And that when you tap into it on that lap that you didn't think you could take, that there is such joy when you look back and are like, wow, I didn't know I had that in me. And it might suck in that moment. You might be like, oh, this is crazy. But I want you to embrace that suck. I want you to make friends with it. And know that this is what expansion, this is what growth looks like. 
And so oftentimes we don't get to decide to go through those growth moments because this is oftentimes what growth looks like. But what we do get to decide is our interpretation of the experience. And so when you're doing that extra lap, that extra song, is it that this always happens to me? Life can never be easy. Just when I think I've made it, of course life throws all this extra drama at me. Ah, is it that or is it, wow, I am growing. And I can feel the discomfort, I can feel the expansion, but wow, I'm an amazing person. That's the decision we get to make. And so the area of your life I want to invite some of that reflection into is how you're handling your logistics, your project management, your time management. Once you take some intentional reflection throughout this week, think about some of the thoughts and some of the examples and mindsets that I'm suggesting. If you want some resources around it, down below is a link where you can go through a free training I'm not just saying all this to plug it at the end. It's only if you want. There's lots of different trainings you can do. It doesn't have to be mine. But I just have found that you're going to experience so much peace, so much more calmness, and you're really going to be able to express your creativity, your intentionality. You're really going to be able to focus on your relationships. This isn't just a business thing. This is in your relationships, and your personal life. When you can get a mastery on your logistics, on your time management, all those kind of things. And so I hope that I have done a good sales job of selling logistics because they make all of the difference. I'd love to hear if any point I brought up was an especially an aha moment for you. If you could screenshot the moment it was at or you just wanna send me a DM and say, Tom, this part was awesome course at Tom Roll Artist. You can find me on any of my social or send me an email tom at tomroll.com. If you have my phone number, send me a text. Let me know what you thought. And if there's any th- questions you had, things I brought up, or if there's any parts that you want to go at it with me a little bit, like, hey, you brought this up, but I kind of think this. I'd love to go back and forth with you. And I apologize if 10 years from now, Tom Roll, people use the clip of you talking about toilet paper. And um, it just goes viral. And you're like, oh my God, 10 years ago, Tom, why did you record this episode? To say, hey, it was worth it. I had fun now. And hey, sorry. Or, ah, 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 ah. now I'm just dancing. All right, my friends, I appreciate the heck out of you for joining me for one of our one-on-one episodes. This was a lot of fun. And as always, I'm wishing you peace and blessings. Thank you. Oh, oh, one, one more thing. I'd love to continue the conversation. Feel free to join me at tomroll.com slash join. Subscribe below or let's connect on social media. Tom Earl Artist. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>